Welcome back to HTech Patch, where we explore the latest developments in technology, Linux, and the open source world. Today, we re-diving deep into something that might not look headline grabbing at first glance, but is actually one of the most important updates for anyone running a modern Linux desktop. GNOME 49.1 has officially landed, and this point release brings a wealth of refinements, stability fixes, and performance boosts that together transform everyday desktop use. It's not about flashy redesigns or dramatic overhauls. Instead, it's about polish, consistency, and reliability. If GNOME 49 laid the foundation for the future of this desktop environment, then GNOME 49.1 is the code of fine finish that makes everything feel just right. To understand why this update matters so much, we need to take a quick step back. When GNOME 49 arrived earlier this year, it was one of the biggest leaps forward for the GNOME project in recent memory. It introduced a redesigned lock screen and notification system, a more adaptive interface for hybrid devices, new default applications, re-engineered settings, panels, HDRAD wallpapers, and a set of under-the-hood improvements to Wayland compositing and application sandboxing. The overall experience became faster, cleaner, and visually more coherent. Yet, as with all major releases, there were a few rough edges. Some users reported minor regressions, small graphical glitches, and inconsistencies that naturally appear when a huge amount of code changes at once. GNOME 49.1 exists precisely to address those issues. It represents a philosophy that GNOME developers live by. Stability first, evolution second. From the moment you install this update and reboot into your GNOME session, you can feel the difference. The system just behaves better. Applications open more quickly. Animations run more smoothly. Workspace transitions feel more synchronized. And the entire interface responds to your input with a sense of polish that is hard to describe until you via used it. The responsiveness improvements aren't a matter of placebo. They stem from concrete engineering work at the heart of GNOME's code base. At the core of every GNOME release are two components that define how the desktop feels. GNOME Shell and Mutter its window manager. In version 49.1, both have been heavily refined. Developers fixed a long-standing issue that caused image corruption when using GNOME's remote desktop feature on systems running in video graphics. For users who rely on remote sessions, especially developers, system administrators, and those working on cloud desktops, this fix is huge. Remote visuals now render cleanly without the tearing and artifacts that previously made remote work frustrating. Another behind-the-scenes improvement involves how GNOME Shell handles terminated child processes. In earlier versions, some background tasks failed to be fully cleared, leaving behind so-called zombie processes that slowly consumed system memory. GNOME 49.1 resolves this by ensuring that all child processes are properly reaped once closed resulting in fewer slowdowns during long sessions. Mudder, meanwhile, got multiple performance tweaks related to how it resizes and moves windows. Those tiny momentary pauses you might have noticed when dragging a window across the screen or resizing an app have been eliminated. The animation path feels smoother, making the interface seem more cohesive. Keyboard layout switching a critical feature for multilingual users has also been fixed. Previously, the on-screen layout indicator sometimes lagged or displayed the wrong icon when switching using modifier-only shortcuts. Now the indicator updates in real time, ensuring you always know which layout you're typing in. For those running GNOME under X11 rather than Wayland, multi-touch gesture handling has been improved dramatically. Pinch to zoom and three-finger swipes now feel smoother and more predictable. Closing the gap between the X11 and Wayland experiences. Nautilus known to most users simply as files, also gets a significant set of fixes. A rare but annoying crash triggered during batch file operations has been eliminated, meaning copying large numbers of files or performing move operations is now more reliable. The team addressed a memory management issue that caused copying very large images to spike RAM usage unnecessarily. Visual clarity has been improved as well. When you cut files using the keyboard shortcut or context menu, their icons now appear dimmed with better contrast so you can easily distinguish between files marked for moving and those that are on T. The default application chooser dialog, which sometimes failed to highlight the correct default app or jumped focus unexpectedly, has been corrected, making file type associations smoother to handle. Archive extraction and compression now 
report progress more accurately and no longer stall mid so you can safely extract large tarballs without wondering if the process froze. Eventid Ragandro behavior in the sidebar feels more natural, allowing easier organization of folders. Epiphany, Gnomes. Default web browser has quietly become one of the more polished, lightweight browsers available on Linux. And GNOME 49.1 pushes it further. The persistent issue where the address bar drop-down menu stayed open even after switching windows has been fixed, keeping your workspace tidy. The browser also handles non-Latin characters correctly now, so URLs written in languages such as Arabic, Japanese, or Russian display exactly as intended. The search profile migration tool has been updated to preserve open search support properly when moving settings from older versions, ensuring your chosen engines Google, DuckDuckGo, Bing, or any custom Previto retain full modern search capability. Keyboard shortcut behavior has also been refined. After focusing the search bar with CTRL plus K, or CTRL plus L, the cursor now stays exactly where it should, avoiding odd text jumps. Favicon rendering, which previously resulted in black square backgrounds for certain icons, now respects transparency, giving tabs a much cleaner look. The GNOME Settings app, or Control Center, is another area of visible improvement. One of the longest standing user requests has been the ability to switch color themes without needing to log out or restart the session. In GNOME 49.1, that feature finally works flawlessly. Changing from light to dark theme or applying an accent color now happens instantly. The date and time panel has smarter time zone detection, especially helpful for users who connect through VPNs or travel frequently. The mouse and touchpad section is smoother too, with more accurate gesture recognition and fixed edge scrolling issues. The network panel refreshes VPN profiles more reliably when they are imported or modified, and the user's panel corrects several inconsistencies involving administrative privilege toggling and user photo updates. If you use a Wacom tablet, you'll appreciate that pen pressure curves and button mapping preferences now persist properly after reboot. These are subtle quality of life changes, but together they make the settings experience feel polished and dependable. Accessibility has always been one of G and OME's core missions, and version 49.1 continues that commitment. The screenshot interface, redesigned back in GNOME 42, now includes improved accessibility metadata, so screen readers can describe elements more precisely. For visually impaired users relying on the Orca screen reader, the improvements are significant. Orca now supports carrot navigation across all text content, not just within browsers, giving users finer control across applications. The DBO's remote controller interface exposes more commands so that assistive technologies can integrate more deeply with the desktop. Orca's preferences dialog is easier to navigate, with clearer voice, variant names, and intuitive sorting. Voice systems are better organized so that male and female variants of the same voice are labeled consistently. Perhaps, most importantly, a regression that prevented Orca from starting automatically in certain GNOME sessions has been resolved. Accessibility, ISNT, just about compliance at S. About ensuring every user can interact with their computer confidently. And GNOME 49.1 exemplifies that philosophy. The lagging experience, managed by the GNOME Display Manager or GDM, also benefits from refinement. Accessibility icons on the login screen are now clearer and match the system theme more closely. A frustrating bug where GDM assumed Wayland was unavailable if certain packages were missing has been fixed, ensuring Wayland sessions launch correctly even on minimal installations. Another reliability improvement addresses cases where GDM could freeze if GNOME shell crashed during startup or logout, reducing those rare moments when you'd be forced to reboot. For enterprise and educational deployments that rely on Kerberos authentication through GNOME online accounts, password handling is more stable and expired credentials trigger clearer prompts rather than silent failures. This is particularly valuable for organizations integrating Linux desktops into Active Directory or other centralized systems. GNOME Software, the graphical app store and package manager, has undergone its own cleanup. Users previously encountered inconsistent or delayed update notifications. That logic has now been rewritten so notifications appear when they should. Metadata handling for package repositories is faster and more efficient cutting down on those misleading no-updates-available messages. Update checks complete more quickly, 
and the entire interface feels more responsive when installing or upgrading applications. It's a quiet improvement that makes the GNOME desktop feel more connected and up-to-date. Beyond the visible fixes, GNOME 49.1 includes countless technical optimizations under the hood. Many system components have been rebuilt against updated libraries for improved security and performance. Background demons use less memory, contributing to lower idle resource consumption. The screenshot and screen recording system now handles multi-monitor setups and high-resolution scaling without distortion. A big help for content creators and professionals using multiple displays. GNOME System Monitor reports CPU usage more accurately thanks to refined sampling logic. These might not make flashy headlines, but they represent the constant engineering discipline that keeps GNOME reliable. The combined result of all these refinements is a desktop that simply feels better to use. You notice it when switching workspaces, dragging windows, or even scrolling through a file list. Everything has a cohesiveness that breeds confidence. Power users who keep dozens of applications open will appreciate the increased stability, while casual users will just sense that the system is smoother. Accessibility users benefit from deeper screen reader integration and better labeled UI components, making GNOME one of the most inclusive open source environments available today. For Linux distributions, GNOME 49.1 is strategically important. It provides a stable, production-ready version of the GNOME 49 series that downstream maintainers can ship without worrying about regressions. That's why many major distributions Ubuntu, Fedora, Workstation, OpenSUSE, Arch, and their derivatives are adopting 49.1 as their default, or pushing it as an update. For system administrators deploying GNOME in enterprise or classroom environments, this version offers improved login management, smoother authentication, and more predictable session behavior. It's the kind of release you can rely on day after day. There's also a broader story here about how GNOME approaches software development. Instead of waiting months or years between major overhauls, the team issues smaller, more frequent point releases. Each one responds quickly to community feedback, closing bugs, refining design, and strengthening performance incrementally. This agile rhythm allows GNOME to evolve continuously without destabilizing the user experience. By the time no M50 arrives, it will rest on a mature, rock-solid foundation built through dozens of such refinements. Performance improvements deserve special mention. GNOME rarely markets raw benchmark numbers, but users do feel the difference. Memory management within GNOME Shell's JavaScript environment has been tuned for better garbage collection, reducing CPU overhead. Mutter's compositor pipeline has been optimized to draw frames more efficiently, resulting in smoother transitions and less energy usage. On laptops, these micro-optimizations translate into slightly longer battery life. On gaming or high-performance setups, fixes to remote desktop rendering and NVIDIA compatibility mean more consistent frame pacing and fewer visual anomalies. The desktop simply feels snappier and more professional. Polish and visual consistency are another recurring theme. Dialog boxes across the environment now share unified warning and alert styles using consistent colors and icons. It might sound minor, but such uniformity gives GNOME its clean, recognizable identity. Switching between light and dark themes no longer causes flicker. GTK popovers behave predictably when nested inside menus, preventing rare freezes that used to occur when hovering between sub- Even the activities overview, the central hub for multitasking, feels tighter. Window focus transitions happen exactly when expected, eliminating those moments where clicking a window didn't immediately bring it forward. All these adjustments reinforce one simple message. Reliability through refinement. GNOME 49.1 doesn't shout for attention. It earns it quietly by behaving flawlessly. It's a maintenance release, yes, but one that represents hundreds of contributions from developers, designers, translators, and testers across the world people who care deeply about user experience. Looking ahead, this release lays crucial groundwork for GNOME 50. Developers are already experimenting with deeper Wayland integration, more adaptive layout systems that can reconfigure depending on device type, and possibly a modernized theme engine that allows richer customization while maintaining GNOME's minimalist design language. Many of the improvements in 49.1 such as refined multi-touch handling, remote desktop stability, and updated accessibility frameworks are essential building blocks for those future capabilities.
So what does all of this mean for you, the end user? It means confidence. It means that your desktop environment, the one you depend on for work, study, or creativity, will perform reliably and look good doing it. It means fewer bugs, fewer interruptions, and a sense that everything just fits together. If you're already on GNOME 49, upgrading to 49.1 is absolutely worth it. The changes might seem subtle at first, but after a few days you'll notice that friction you used to feel the slight delay here. The odd flicker there has quietly disappeared. The system simply fades into the background so you can focus on your tasks. GNOME 49.1 also exemplifies the collaborative spirit of open source. Every fix and feature represents someone somewhere taking the time to report a bug, review code, translate a string, or refine a visual asset. This community-driven process ensures that GUM, M-E, evolves not in isolation, but in response to real users. The result is a desktop that reflects thousands of shared decisions aimed at making computing more human. In the end, GNOME 49.1 isn't about revolution. It's about evolution, done right. It's a master class in software craftsmen. Ship careful, deliberate, and user. The desktop runs smoother, consumes fewer resources, behaves more consistently, and remains accessible to everyone. The fact that such a massive ecosystem can coordinate these refinements so effectively is a testament to how mature the Linux desktop has become. So as you update your system and explore GNOME 49.1, Take a moment to appreciate the work behind it. Each smoother animation, each polished dialogue, each resolved bug represents the quiet success of open collaboration. This is what continuous improvement looks like in the open source world. Small steps that, together, create a giant leap in experience. And that wraps up today's deep dive. If you enjoyed this exploration of GNOME 49.1 and want to stay updated on all things Linux and open source, make sure to subscribe to HTech Patch. Hit the notification bell so you never miss a release. And drop a comment below sharing your experience with the new update. Are you already running GNOME 49.1? Have you noticed smoother animations or better performance on your system? Your feedback helps both the community and the developers understand what is working well and where the next improvements should focus. Thanks for watching and for supporting open source innovation. I'll see you in the next video where we allow continue uncovering the latest developments shaping the future of Linux desktops and the broader world of technology. Until then, keep your system updated, keep exploring, and keep patching your tech with curiosity and passion the HTech batch way.